In this video, we're going to be going over Unit 1, which is E, Unit 1, Part E, which is chemical formula equations and calculations. And in this video, we'll only be going through these three. So we're going to be cal calculating the mass of these three compounds. The first one is simple is a simple covalent structure. So this will say that we're calculating the m, sorry, the molecular mass because it is a molecule. So molecular mass. Whilst the bottom two will be calculating the formula mass because it's giant ion because it's a because both of these are giant ionic. So giant structures we just calculate the formula mass of so sim the simplest ratio. So to calculate the mass of a form of a fluorine molecule, we first need to look find the AR, which is in the periodic table, the top number of the periodic table. And once we found out the AR, we can then multiply it by how many atoms we have in that molecule. We have two fluorine atoms, so we're going to times that by two. That's going to equal 38. We do the same for aluminium chloride. So we find aluminium in the periodic table, find its mass number, which is 27, plus chlorine's mass number, 35.5, and multiply by any, um, by the amount, by the number of atoms in that formula or molecule, in this case, formula. So this should equal 133. Now always include your working out because you may get marks for your working out. Next one, copper sulfate, 63.5 plus our sulfur, which is 32, plus oxygen, which is 14, oh, sorry, 16, sorry, times 4 plus now we have a dot here that just that just tells us that just divides copper sulfate and the water molecules that allows you to have this number here plus five times and water is 18 so i'll just put 18 here just for shorthand now that you should get should get 249.5 Here's some practice for you. Pause the video and restart when you're ready. Don't have to do all of them. Okay, here are your answers. Just correct them if you haven't, or if you got them wrong. So you should feel comfortable in calculating the MRs, that's the relative formula mass, or the, me or the molecular mass, depending on if it's a giant structure or a, or a simple structure. Should be able to, should be confident in calculating the MRs from the ARs, and you get the ARs from the periodic table, so the atomic masses. The next point we're going to do 1.27, which is know that mole is the unit for the amount of substance. So in chemistry, chemists like uh, chemists don't like to use grams or kilograms or anything like that because it doesn't tell us the number of particles that are reacting that are reacting together. So we use something that's more accurate, which tells us the number of particles present and that is called the mole. Now one mole is equivalent to this number. So if we have one mole of water, we have that amount of H2O particles. Now in a in like a glass of water you have around eight moles of water. So eight moles of water particles in water. It's a very large number and we also call it Avogadro's number named after the scientist. Its unit is mole, which is quite confusing because it's so close to it's so close to the actual name. So mole is the unit, and um, it's called mole. Mole. Okay, to work out the number of moles in a substance, there's two things that you need. You need to know the mass in grams, and then you need to know the MR in the periodic table. If you know those two things, you can always get the MR from the periodic table. So if you know those two things, you can work out the number of moles or the number of atoms in, in, in a substance. So 
if you have, let's say you have 12 grams of carbon, um, you know that MR for carbon is 12. Now, just know, um, you know that you're going to have one mole of carbon. Okay. Now let's do that for something else like chlorine. So if you have um, the mass, if you have 35.5 grams of chlorine, you know that the MR is 35.5, and then you know, then you do the calculation. You'll know that you'll have one mole. Now you'll see here that the mass, that so that the number of moles. So you'll know that one mole of any substance has a mass which is the same as its MR. So one mole of carbon, one mole of carbon, 12, weighs 12 grams. One mole of chlorine, 35.5, weighs 35.5 grams, okay? And you, you need to know this calculation out of your head. Moles equals mass over MR. You also need to know how to rearrange this equation. So rearranging the equation, when you bring something to the opposite sign of the equals, you have to reverse the sign. So if you've got if you've got divide by MR on one side, if you bring it to the other side, it actually becomes times MR. So you get moles times MR equals your mass. Now, if you wanted MR by itself, you have to bring times mole to the other side, and that becomes divide mole. So you have MR equals mass divided by moles. Okay, you need to know how to do that. And I would suggest that you learn how to rearrange equations rather than using triangle waves, just because it's easier. Okay, we're going to be able to we're going to calculate the mass. We're going to calculate the mass of calcium oxide by heating 25 grams of calcium carbonate. So when working with these equations, when you're trying to calculate the mass and um, from chemical symbols or from the balanced chemical symbol equation, then I think it's always best to draw a, a table here. You can put all your values in and it just organizes all the information you have because it can get um, a bit a bit mind blocking about all the information you have. So the first thing I'll include in the top here is ratio. And this just tells you how the ratio of um, molecules which react with um, the other molecules or produce other molecules. So one calcium carbonate molecule reacts to form one calcium oxide molecule and one carbon dioxide molecule. That's our ratios. Those are the ratios we're dealing with. So if we have two moles of calcium carbonate, let's say we did, um, then two moles of calcium carbonate are going to react to form two moles of calcium oxide to form two moles of carbon dioxide. Just like if we had three molecules of calcium carbonate, that's going to form three molecules of calcium oxide and three molecules of carbon of carbon dioxide. So remember, moles is just a number. Okay. So balanced equations are very important here. Next one, I'll include the mass and then the MR and then the moles. So mass equals, oops, sorry, I'll probably switch these around to be in line with the equation. Mass equals mole over MR. So here we say calculate the mass of calcium oxide produced. So we're calculating the mass of calcium oxide. So I'm going to put a question mark. I'm going to put a question mark here because that's what we're trying to calculate. Uh, by heating 25 grams of calcium carbonate. So we've got 25 grams of calcium carbonate. We want to find out how the mass of calcium oxide is produced. So to do that, we need to find out the, the number of moles. And to do that, we need to find out the MR. This is quite easy because we, we could just work out the MR of this of calcium carbonate. So looking in a periodic table, calcium's mass number is 40 plus carbon, which is 12 plus oxygen, which is 16, but times this by three. If we add all of this together, we're going to get 100. So we've got the MR and we've got the mass. Now to work out the moles, if we look at our equation, which you should know out your head, mole equals mass over MR. To work out the mole, we just do mass divided by MR, which is 25 uh, divided by 100, which equals 0 0.25. Okay. 
Next one, here we, um, so if we have 0 0.25 moles of calcium carbonate, because it's a one-to-one -one ratio, we're going to have 0 0.25 moles of um, calcium oxide and 0 0.25 moles of carbon dioxide, but we don't need to do that. So this, we don't actually need to do that colour, not important. So our MR of calcium oxide is 40, which is calcium, and then oxygen plus 16 equals 56. Now to work out the mass, we need to rearrange this equation. And if we bring divide MR over to the other side, it's going to reverse the function, so it's going to become times MR. So, so MR times mole, so times these two together, we're going to get the mass, which is going to be 14 grams. And that sounds about right, 25 grams of calcium carbonate, react to form 14 grams of calcium oxide. Therefore, if you minus these two, um, you're actually going to get nine grams of carbon dioxide. Sorry, 11 grams. 11 grams of carbon dioxide. And that will be the same even if you worked it out the other way. So again, we're calculating the mass. We're calculating masses from experimental data and using balanced symbol equations. So this is why balanced symbol equations are important. As I said in the last video, the last one was quite easy. This one's a bit more challenging. So we're going to start off doing exactly the same thing that we did before. So our ratio um, and our mass first and our moles and then our MR. So here we said calculate the mass of iron. So let's put a question mark in the mass of iron. So question mark there which can be formed from 1,000 grams of iron oxide, which is F323. So 1,000 grams of iron oxide. Okay, so we should be able to work this out. Um, so our ratio here, so we look at the number in front here. So our ratio is 1, 3, 2, and 3. We probably don't need some of these. We probably don't need this. We don't need this, but th there we are. Those are our ratios anyway. So we have uh, another piece of information we can find out quite easily is looking at the periodic table. So for iron, looking at the periodic table, iron is 56. So if we do 56 times 2 plus 16 times 3, we're going to get our MR of iron oxide, which is equal to 160. Now, to work out the moles, we again, we do mole equals mass over mr that's the equation you should always you should always know and you can rearrange from here so um 1000 divided by 160 you are going to get 6.25 6.25 moles so if you have 6.25 moles of iron oxide we're going to have double that for, double that is going to be produced for iron so that is going to be it's going to be 12.5. Now from here, um, we so the MR of iron is 56. Then we can find out the mass of iron, and that's the final thing that we need to work out. And we've done this. So to do that, we again need to move the MR over here. So it's times. So we do MR times mole. So we times these two together, and we should get. 700 grams and that looks about right 1000 grams of iron oxide reacts to form 700 grams of iron and if you wanted to it is going to be 300 grams of oh no it's not sorry, it's not it's not ignore me so um yeah that looks about right okay so i've got some questions here for you i want you to spend about five or ten minutes just doing these using the exact same method use a table method um, write out the balanced chemical symbol equation be careful of the ratios as well and you should be all set you may start okay these are your answers for your first and second one so for number 13 this is what you should have got the next one this is what you should have got Okay, for number 15, 16, again, same again. Um, you can pause it now and then we'll, we'll go over the answers after. Okay, so here are your answers for 15. And here are your answers for 16.